All right, welcome back to Marshall Remodel. This is the Mad County Build Series. My name is Paul, and on today's show, we're gonna talk about this uh, wood stove that I have. I've gotten lots of questions on whether I'm gonna need makeup air, how it efficient is this stove, um, why I chose a wood stove over uh, an insert or conventional fireplace, and a couple other questions. But um, I'm gonna show you some of the accessories that I'm installing on this wood stove. We'll talk a little bit about some of those questions and my feelings on it. For those of you who are new to this channel, I have an entire wood stove playlist on installing a hearth, installing the wood stove and chimney, installing Versetta stone backdrop, making and installing your own live edge mantle. So if you guys are interested in any of that, check out the wood stove playlist. Um, but let's go ahead and jump into installing these accessories. All right, so we got all the fire brick installed. We are choosing to use an ash drawer. So instead of putting this last fire brick in right there, we removed this plate. We are going to have this, this is the ash drawer cover. It literally just sits in there. And then obviously that would be hot, so it comes with a tool that you can lift that in and out with uh, when need be. So we'll just leave that in there. Um, that is the ash drawer lid, which stays in there. You can keep it in there. It's a pretty big ash drawer. It's got a nice handle in the front. You can see those slide into those grooves right there. Door just slides in there. Um, one thing nice about the stove, if you look at that, it doesn't look bad, but it's not super visually appealing. But it's got this trim door here. You can see those little feet just slide into those grooves, slide down, and now you have a nice finished look on the front. So when you want to remove the ash, you just lift that up rock it down and then you can pull the ash drawer out and take it outside so now that we got those two things installed we're going to install this blower um, which is literally just two screws we've got to remove two screws slide it up in behind the uh, wood stove um, install two screws and then it's good to go and you can run this either off a thermostat that's built into the blower so once the stove gets to a certain temperature, it will kick the fan on. And once it goes below a certain temperature, it'll turn it off. That way you're not wasting electricity running this. So here's the fan. It's got the auto or manual button, and then it's got a high and low. So if you have an, it in auto, you can choose whether you want the fan to come on in high or low and vice versa. If you have it on manual, you can also choose. And it doesn't matter. As uh, the stove is, you're burning wood, you can switch back from auto and manual at any time, and it's not gonna affect the operation of this fan. There is the temperature sensor right there that will be up against the stove once you slide it up in there. See, that's quick and easy install. I have an outlet here that I can plug it into. You can see it was already on, so there's the off. Low. 
Then <clears throat> this stove comes with this heat deflector, which what that does is as the heat comes off the back of the stove, it deflects it forward. So if you have a blower on, the air comes up and then it shoots the air straight out. And they make fans that literally sit on your wood stoves that have like a radiator on them that collect the heat and turn that heat into electricity to operate a fan. So that's what we will primarily use is a way to move the heat around the house. It's just nice to have a little movement of this heat. So that's what we'll use mostly. And if uh, we think we need to turn the fan on, the wood stove on just to get an extra amount of heat in the house, then we have that option. So lastly, we're gonna be installing two different thermostats. The first one is a catalyst thermometer that came with the stove. It's got a pre-drilled quarter inch hole. And this stove has a triple burn technology. And there is a bypass so you can bypass the catalyst burner right there. But in order for that system to work, the stove has to reach 500 degrees and that is what this thermometer is for. You take this little insert, drop it in the hole, and then this thermostat um, goes down in there and it will tell you if your wood stove is at a temperature where that catalyst will be functional. So it literally just slides in there and sits. And then the second thermometer we're going to be installing is one in the double wall chimney pipe, which I bought. Um, I like to have these because it just gives you a really good idea at what temperature your stove is running and whether you're running it too hot. Um, you have to drill two holes. You take a 3 16 drill bit and drill through both the outside and inside pipe. Then in just the outside pipe, you do a quarter inch. So it's 3 16 through both the outside and inner pipe, and then a quarter through just the outside. So you're just making this outside one a little bit bigger. Then you have three pieces. You have this piece, you have a magnet and then you have the little insert. So um, the insert will go inside the magnet. This will go through the insert and the magnet. And then you will slide this through. And what that magnet does is hold this all in its place right there. And it's that simple. All right, so one thing to keep in mind is if you go to clean your flu and you have a uh, flu thermometer, you need to pull this out before doing so or your rod and brush will hit this and you can end up damaging it or breaking it. Um, so it's just as simple as pulling it straight out, clean your flu, and then you can put it back in. So on this particular stove here, we have the bypass. So if you pull it this way, the bypass is open. So the air can go directly from inside the burning chamber straight up the flue pipe. Then once we get to an active stage, we can close this and then we can um, control the stove with our air damper. So if it's open, that allows the most air into the burning chamber that you can have. And then as you get up to where you want, you can close this down to where you can slow the burn down. All right, so I've gotten a lot of questions uh, of why a wood stove over an insert or over a conventional fireplace, solar over all kinds of stuff. And here's the thing for me, we are in an area where we have access to on-grid power, on-grid water, and that's what we're hooked up to. If we get in a situation where we don't have power, we don't have water, I have a generator to power the electric and I have a wood stove inside to uh, create heat for us. Um, the reason I chose a wood stove is because all I need is wood to heat this house. So 
If we were to get in a situation where we wouldn't have power for a long period of time and our in-floor heat wouldn't work or our furnaces wouldn't work, I can heat and live in this house all winter with just this wood stove and it will literally take zero power. And these are super efficient. They're more efficient than an insert because you have 360 degrees of heating capabilities plus the pipe going up will also put heat out into the room. So that's the simple answer is I need nothing other than wood to heat my house if I don't have power. Um, plus I, I love wood stoves. I burned wood for a long time. Um, growing up that's all we heated our house with. Uh, we've had wood stoves in our previous houses and we just find it's a really efficient way to get uh, get heat. Now I will tell you, you do have to like to cut and split wood, which I do. We live on a piece of property that provides uh, timber for us to use to burn our stove. I probably have two or three years of firewood already um, collected from clearing um, that location where our house was and cleaning up certain parts of our property. Plus there's a bunch of other trees that are down that I need to cut up and split. So. It's a good way to utilize the resources I have right here on my oh. property. One of the most important things with your wood stove is that you have good seasoned wood. A lot of this has been down and cut up for a couple years. Um, I've split it, stacked it, and that air flows through there and it is good and dry. So this is kind of where and how I deal with my firewood right now. Eventually I would like to build a lean-to um, where air can still flow through and dry it, but I can get a roof over it. But I've, I've used this method for a long time and I have really good success still burning good hot fires in my wood stove. When we're talking about whether this wood stove will draw or not, I can tell you this, the straighter the run your pipe has, the better it's going to draw. With that being said, if you have a couple 45s in your stove to get to a certain point on your roof, you'll be fine. It just might be a little more difficult when you first start your fire until everything heats up for that air to draw. Now, when I open this and the flue is open, I can feel the air drawing from inside the house up the flue already. And All right, so hopefully, guys, this, this quick video um, was helpful. It answered a few questions. You know, I'm sorry that I haven't been able to run this yet to fully answer whether I'll need makeup air, to fully answer how it, uh, how this specific stove uh, works. But as soon as it gets cold, trust me, I will have a fire in this thing and I'm gonna burn it and I'm gonna burn it a lot this winter. So as the winter progresses and I burn this more, I will give uh, I will put out another video on how I feel this stove is performing and whether you know we've had trouble with it drawing and all that kinds of stuff. But until next time, we appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and we will catch you on the next video.